Hello everyone, I'm Johan Furi. I'm the Salon Master at Benguela Cove Wine Estate in South Africa, in the Walker Bay region. Uh, for those of you that have been to South Africa, you've probably been to two places, one being Cape Town Table Mountain, the other one would be our little town called Hermanus, which is uh, known for its beautiful beaches, whales, but also wines of course, nice cool climate. Wines of uh, quite a distinct character and quality. Um, as you are probably aware, there's all sorts of online tastings and webinars and everything going around recently. And I've also been having to do quite a few of them. And what is nice about these are that um, more than your normal tasting, people get to interact and ask questions because they can almost like be semi-anonymous. Semi so they feel free to ask questions. and. Sulfur or sulfites, oh my word, um, I always knew there was a big misunderstanding on what sulfur is and how it is in wine, but little did I realize of how big an, an issue this is and how totally misunderstood sulfur is in wine. So after getting so many questions about it and some of them even turned into like heated debates, um, on the on the topic, I decided to maybe just from a winemaker's point of view, just to give you a little bit about insight on what uh, sulfurs is and what they do. So I'm not here to fight, um, so I'm not going to get my boxing gloves on. But um, since it's so misunderstood, I'm going to put my lab coat on so we can get all technical about this. So let's get our geek on a little bit about sulfur in wine. So um, for those that don't, that don't want to watch the entire video, I think it's got probably going to be two or three minutes, let me start with jumping to the end of, of this. Sulfur, sulfite, the same thing, totally, totally misunderstood. Sulfur has been made the culprit of anything that goes wrong or any allergies or headaches and all sorts of things in wine totally wrong there's a lot of myths around it but let me quickly if you're keen uh, let me quickly tell you about sulfur the role it plays and what it does in in wine so there's a whole lot of myths around sulfur um, the first one the biggest one would be that terrible headache that you wake up with the next morning um, you feel dizzy you feel a little bit unwell and oh that's because there's so much sulfur in the wine. So the questions that I've been getting is, do you add sulfur? How much sulfur are you, are you adding? For? And then I, when I ask people, but uh, why are you asking or what has happened or what is the effect you had? 99 out of 100 times, it's not sulfur related. But unfortunately, sulfur has been around in wine forever. It goes back to the days in the Romans they've been using sulfur to preserve their wines from turning into vinegar. So because it's been around and been used in wines forever, um, it's become the culprit for anything that goes wrong in, in wine. So I also just want to add, well, it's, today is about two things. is Sulfur is not what it's been blamed to be. The second thing is that all wines do have sulfur in them. Full stop, and I'll explain to you a little bit later. We can talk about more about that. Even your biodynamic, natural, hippie, um, hipster, natural wine, organic wines, they all have sulfur. Different levels, levels of sulfur, but at the end of the day, they all have sulfur because sulfur is a, naturally gets produced as a byproduct from the fermentation process. But let's get back to some of those myths, headaches, probably the biggest one. So headaches, it's been proven um, that there's no relationship between the sulfites in wine and the headache or the hangover that you wake up with. The culprits in this case is, um, well, the number one would be alcohol and the second one would be sugar. Because both alcohol and sugar dehydrates you and that is what makes that gives you the headache and makes you feel unwell and sometimes sick. So alcohol is the is the biggest reason with that. 
as you know, alcohol is not only limited to, to wine, it's spirits, it's beer, everything that's got alcohol in it. So it's not a wine specific thing that you get a headache, okay? Um, if you have a wine with a little bit of sugar added to it, like, and go and check this out, um, next time when you buy a wine, you can go to any winery's website, it should be what they call a tech sheet or information sheet about the wine. Go and do yourself a favor and check the sugar level. So when you've got a, a high-ish alcohol wine with sugar added to that, it knocks you a little bit, little bit more. So the second myth that is there that I get quite often is that um, red wines have more sulfites than white wines and therefore gives more headache. Again, not right. Um, in fact, it's the reverse of that. Red wines have lower levels of sulfur because you don't have to add so much sulfur to red wine to preserve it because red wines has got other um, compounds like tannins and lots of polyphenols that naturally are antioxidants and protects the wine where white wines do not have all these tannins so you need to add a little bit more sulfur to to whites to to preserve them the reason why reds can potentially give you more of an of an headache or allergic effect is because there's tannins and some people have an allergic re uh, reaction to tannins where can either give a little bit of a swell or red cheeks or, or ears, but not really common to, to have an allergic effect to tannins, although it's, it, it, it can be. Um, but then red wines also have an, another um, compound which is also formed naturally by yeast and bacteria, which is called histamine. And this you find in, in anything, um, cheeses, fish, meats, wines, it's all over the show again in various um, levels. So there's more compounds that in red wines that are prone to give you um, an allergic effect or makes you feel bad the day after. More of those in red than in white, so hence the reason why people think, and again wrongly, making sulfur the culprit or blaming sulfur for that, which again has got nothing to do with the sulfur. Um, Maybe just why do we, we use SO2, well, sulfur or sulfites, um, it's been referred to differently in different countries, or we just call it SO2. Why do we use it in, in wine, but not only in wine, in food, any food um, processing, um, food processes. Um, it's got two, two um, reasons why we use it. The first one is that it's got an antioxidative um, effect so it, it preserves the wine so it preserves the wine from from going bad or food or anything that it's been used in is to preserve it so in the case of wine we use it so when it reaches your glass tonight at the table that it looks the way we intended it to be when it when we bottled it at, at the winery so wine oxidizes when it's exposed to oxygen it's some of those compounds are broken down, they go wrong, they, they lose their flavor, they lose their freshness, their aromatics, and it's really just a dull, boring liquid. And it, sometimes it can go quite bad, you know, into secondary off flavors as well. The same like cutting a fresh apple, leave it outside for an hour or what, you see the browning happening, so that's, um, that's oxidation. Um, so oxidation is the one. The other one would be it's an antimicrobial um, effect that it's also got. So sulfur protects your wines from oxidation, but it also protects it from spoilage, yeasts or bacteria that can also make it go off um, and just not or terrible in fact to, to drink. So, um, and this is where it gets a little bit technical, but I want you to, to understand this. So everything in wine and including um, sulfurs is dependent on pH. So pH uh, measures your level of acidity or alkalinity. So normal wine pHs would be between 3.1 to 3.8, some 3.94, but those aren't really supposed to be that high, but it's, again, it's not possible. So the lower your pH, bear with me, the more effective your SO2 is. So the lower the pH, the more 
or the less SO2 you have to get to protect your wine against spoilage bacteria or yeast, but also um, the less sulfur you have to add to protect it from oxidation. The higher your pH, you have to add much more sulfur to get the same protective effect. So low pHs are always um, a winemaker's friend. So that is the one thing that affects how much sulfur a winemaker needs to add. The second thing is that different wineries are set up in, in different ways. So we're an estate winery, so to be an estate winery, what that means is everything needs to happen on site. We can only use our own grapes, everything needs to be made in our own winery, but also we have to bottle on site or at source. So what this means is we don't have to transport wine left, right and center and truck it to the bottling plant and back and this way and that way. It's not a big um, multi-million liter winery now. So we, we have to move wines maybe once or twice. The third movement would be straight into bottle. So we don't have to add SO2 to protect the wine every, with every step of, of the process. That's the, that's the one advantage we have. The second advantage is that where we at in the Walker Bay region is what's, what's referred to as cool climate. And with cooler climates, you get natural le higher levels of acidities, and the higher the acidities, the lower pHs you enjoy in your wines. So again, where someone sitting on a wine with 3.8 need to add so much sulfur, with our pHs we only add this much to get the same effect so we can get away with lower sulfur levels because of pH but because also because our wines are bottled at source we don't need to add sulfur all along to to protect um, to protect the wine um, so you know and then I mean last but not least is also um, and bear with me here is that sugar as well our wines that we produce here are all except for one dessert wine are all dry wines so there's no residual sugar left in the wine so what happens when you bottle a wine with residual sugar and there's potential yeast contamination you can have a secondary ferment in your happening in your bottle which one of the byproducts of, of a fermentation is co2 gas which pushes out your cork and to control that potential yeast growth in a wine, should you have sugar in the wine, is to add more SO2 to keep to have that antimicrobial effect. So, dry wines bottled at source with lower pHs, and lower pHs generally come with lower levels of alcohol, um, means less SO2. Lower levels of alcohol also meaning less of that headache the, the next morning. So, but just getting back to sulfur and um, some of the symptoms, because this can be a little bit confusing, is that um, some of the symptoms you, you get from sulfur or other um, compounds that can have an allergic effect, and that's what, what makes it diff difficult, is because you can't really distinguish um, sulfur only gives this, and histamine or tannins gives a totally different effect, they all give a little bit of an itching feeling, a swelling, and maybe a difficulty of breathing or the red cheeks. Um, but in the case of sulfur, it is, and this is not me saying this, this is proven. Of all people with asthma, all right, so not everybody's got asthma. So let's say um, 10 of 100 people have asthma. Of that 10 people, only 5% of those with asthma will have an allergic or can have an allergic effect to sulfites. So, of the little bit of people that suffer from asthma, 5% of that can potentially be allergic to sulfites. The rest of you are fine. If, if, it, um, if it happens or you've got an allergic effect, as I said, it's either the alcohol, it's the sugar, or it's some of the tannins or the histamine. So histamine might be a new one, it's still very, it's very much uh, researched and it's a difficult one and unlike sulfites where we put on the bottle contains sulfites because it's known that it can have an allergic effect, 
Histamine is still a little bit of a in a gray area. There's not quite well established what levels of histamine can have an allergic effect on what kind of people. And also, you know, uh, we know histamine um, is, is, uh, occurs naturally and is enhanced by the likes of yeasts and bacteria and, and, and stuff. But you can't really um, pinpoint um, histamine um, and relate it to, oh, it's more in white wines and less in red wines, or uh, Merlot's got more than Cabernet Sauvignon, or Sauvignon Blanc more than Chardonnay. So there's still a lot of research going on about it. What we do know is that um, histamine, because there's uh, bacteria and yeast in, involved, is um, some producers have more of it in their wine than others because it's related to your winemaking practices. Do you have the ability to sort your grapes on arrival at the winery? Can you take out some of those not so good bunches that might have a little bit of mold growth or stuff on them? How hygiene is your winemaking and your cellaring um, practices? How well are your barrels maintained during the aging process? So if you find a wine that gives you an allergic reaction, the chances are good that it might be this histamine. Let's say it is a Cabernet Sauvignon. That does not mean that all Cabernet Sauvignons are gonna give you this allergic reaction. But I can pretty much be sure that all the wines from that producer will give it to you because it all, it's all coming from the same winery. Take a Cabernet Sauvignon from another winery, it might not have any of that. As I said, it's not related to uh, a region or a grape so much, but on cellar um, practices. Okay, so um, I hope that kind of um, clarifies a little bit um, where um, sulfites fit in and how it's totally uh, incorrectly been made the culprit um, over years as, as I said for anything wrong in wine so I mean what do you do what do you as the as the consumer and the wine lover what is it that that you do when you go and um, shop wine um, well for those the little small percentage that do have an issue or an allergic effect as I said it is 5% of the limited number of people that might have asthma in the case of sulfur. So next time when you shop wine or when you open a bottle today, go and do yourself a favor. And a lot of people don't really check on this. Firstly, go and check on the, on the back label, the alcohol percentage. You'll be surprised. Um, a lot of wineries, um, depending on the market um, and the style that the market wants, are producing um, wines of higher and higher alcohol because with the higher alcohol levels becomes more of this nice attractive fruity um, flavors the tannins are softer and juicy and it's a rich and creamy style which as I said some markets prefer um, but to get to that style it means you have to pick your grapes at a higher sugar level the higher the sugar the higher the alcohol content you sit with at the end of the day so go and look out for alcohol I would say anything above 14.5 that's becoming and that's becoming high in alcohol and uh, the potential of suffering as a consequence of that um, is real um, it's not it's not a fact but if you enjoy it second or a third glass um, it's something to, to take notice of so when we strive towards those higher alcohol wines and the style they give what also comes with that level of ripeness is higher pH levels and if you'll remember what I said previously higher pH levels means you need to add more sulfur to protect that wine so now you're sitting with higher sulfur and higher alcohol so the chances are that this wine is not going to end up being a lot of fun should you be allergic is is there the other thing that you can pay attention to and as i said most of these wines should have you should be able to have access through the winery's website to the the stats or next time when you walk into your local wine shop or grocer ask the wine guy you know that's also all clever about sulfites and stuff go and ask him all right, so tell me about the alcohol, the pH, and the sugar in this wine. So we've discussed alcohol, we've discussed pH and the effect that that might have, but also sugar. 
So many people are not aware of how many wines out there have sugar, residual sugar in them. So on the technical sheet, there should be RS. It means residual sugar. So anything below three grams per liter residual sugar in my books are seen as, as dry. So there's no risk of a secondary fermentation. So there's no need of to add additional sulfur to that wine to have uh, the antimicrobial effect to prevent that from a, a secondary fermentation. Now I want to challenge you. Alcohol and pH as a side, go and check on, um, on, on the residual sugars in those wines that you enjoy. I think you'll be surprised. So as I mentioned, the higher the sugar, like of the pH, the more sulfites you need to add. In those wines, bottle that sauce, um, lower alcohols, dry in sugar, which all are already healthier, also less preservatives needs to be, to be added to that. Um, also an, an alternative to, to that would be um, if you look at your organic or biodynamic or natural wines, not that all wines aren't natural, uh, the whole natural wine and what that means is a discussion we can have on another day maybe. But then go and look at your organic wine or your biodynamic wine. So uh, in most countries to be organic or biodynamic means you can't add any sulfur to that wine. But as I mentioned earlier, that wines also have sulfites in them because it naturally occurs as a byproduct from the fermentation process. But it's often misleading. Um, you'll see uh, 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 organic wines, uh, as I mentioned, not allowed to have any added sulfur. But read closely. Those wines would, might be marketed as organic, but read closely on the label. I, most of them will say, made from organic grapes or made from organically grown grapes, which means the way the grapes are grown are following organic um, grape growing principles and processes, but the winemaking is conventional, meaning that that's normal winemaking with, with sulfur added and, 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 and. So not, don't always um, you know, be uh, rest assured about that natural wine, organic or biodynamic or witchcraft, hipster um, wine picked at when the moon was up or down. I'm not always sure what all this, how all this stuff works. Um, I'm not dismissing it. It's fantastic and there's some guys doing great jobs, but that's also not your, um, often not the, the answer you are, um, are looking for. And then, I mean, I've even seen some stuff um, like uh, these little, um, tubes that people buy and it's little droplets that you put in your wine to get rid of the sulfites. My word, um, I don't know if you're aware, but that is, um, that's peroxide that you're adding. So I'm, I'm not sure if you've ever had peroxide get onto your fingers. We use it quite a lot in the winery for cleaning purposes. And back in the days that was used to bleach people's hair as well, but um, peroxide, that is what you're adding into your wine to get what potential traces of sulfide there might be by the time you open it to get rid of that and then people think they're doing the right thing by adding these little hydrogen peroxide drops in their wine. Um, again, maybe think carefully about that. So yes, there is um, wines out there without any added sulfur. Um, the challenge with those is that the shelf life is really, really short. So maybe um, six months is what you can, can get out of them in terms of shelf life. Six months if it is stored in the right conditions. So how do we know when it leaves port, it crosses the equator or wherever the wine is from, it gets transported by road, it sits in a warehouse, you don't have control over those over that whole supply chain. So by the time it hits the shelf, and even the temperature in the shop might not be ideal. So that six months can now become two months, or by the time you open it, it's shot already. So um, and um, yeah, so those wines do taste a bit odd um, when you open them. They might be a bit cloudy or milky because there's probably a second fermentation or something living in there already. 
Let's say the color is odd, it might be slightly oxidized and all of that comes with an odd taste as well. So um, when, um, when you buy wine, for me it's like buying cheese or meat or um, dried fruit or anything. All of that um, products also have sulfites in them. So I'm not going to go to the shop and ask the butcher, can you give me a low sulfite cut of meat that smells a little bit funny, it's starting to discolor or a cheese that's got a little bit of mold growth on it because it's not a lot of sulfites added to it. Definitely not. I'm not going to put myself at risk by doing that. So why would you do that with wine? Why would you want to buy something with low sulfites that aren't protected and even worse that is not what I intended it to be by the time it gets to you and for, for, for us specifically for Benguela Cove it's super important that when you open it um, and pour it that it is exactly how we intended it to be because our whole wine making philosophy at Benguela Cove is, uh, is showing you our piece of earth, our terroir, what you get from growing grapes so close to the ocean with our unique soils. Um, the wines have got a real character and a, and a charisma to them and so we are really focused on our, on our site and showcasing that in the glass and to preserve that we need to add sulfur to that and I'm not ashamed of it at all because I want you to see our site the freshness, the vibrancy, the aromatics, and just all those beautiful flavors, not some odd off um, flavors or of the wine suffered over, over time. So we, it's what we call it, it's we produce site-specific wines, and I would urge you to go and look out for those wines. We've even got a whole group of wineries or winemakers that are uh, what we call the Cape site-specific wines, and I know a lot of those wines are available in, in your market so go and look for those those wines or we'll post the, the importers details below this video as well so you can go and look up um, those wines but I just want to make it clear I'm not dismissing or um, talking down those ones that are, are promoting the low sulfur um, thing we we using it and for the reasons I've mentioned because as I hopefully I've been getting the message across Sulfur is not the culprit it's made out to, um, to be. So you can decide, um, as I said with the meat, do you want to use, or do you want to eat that brown, dried out, um, discolored, um, dried peach, or do you want a nice and orange, soft and juicy one? Because the nice, soft, orange, juicy one is the one that's been protected by sulfites. So, long story short, SO2 is not the devil that it's made out to be. It's the guardian angel in winemaking. Please look at it that way. I'm not in the business of selling sulfites. I don't get any kickbacks from talking to you about sulfites. But what is important for me is to set the record straight and for you to understand what sulfites is about and the role that it plays. Because unfortunately, Wine, like any other industry, is quite competitive. Some people don't have a great product or a great story to sell, so they start to think of all these different ways and call it fake news or different ways to set themselves aside and to promote their product by telling you stuff that aren't accurate. And that is why I'm here, is just to help you to what is really the story behind it and to, to, to set the record straight. So I think that's enough. Um, yeah, welcome to contact me over social media on, on more questions. I think I just opened a can of worm on histamine and natural wines and how all of that works. But um, yeah, stay safe. Uh, I hope you have enough wines to enjoy. Go. I hope you enjoy some South African wines. It is the fastest growing wine category in your market. So if you want to talk along and don't want to miss out on why, go and get yourself a, a bottle of South African wine and, and come and visit us when all of this is, is over. Um, Cape Town Hermanus. Um, Cape Town has recently been awarded um, the most um, revisited 
um, city in, in the world. So people that have been here once, they always come back and they come back for not only for the culinary experience, but for the winelands and everything that's, that's on offer here. So um, yeah, go grab that bottle of South African wine and um, why not start with a, a bottle of, of Benguel Cove. Thanks for watching guys.